First up, the author of this book, The Man Who Stalked Einstein, How Nazi Scientist Philip Leonard Changed the Course of History. That's right. We're here now with Bruce Hillman to bring light to this little-known story. So if you're a history buff, you're going to love this one. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure yeah. to meet you. What got you interested in this story of Einstein and the person who stalked him? This seems sort of like one of those, you know, little kind of stories that gets passed on and then just sort of stops. But you, no. you really want to bring it to light. I do. It's a very, very interesting story, and Leonard is a very interesting character, a very accomplished man who uh, won the Nobel Prize himself, but who had, uh, so you might say, a personality disorder that uh, just grew over time, and, and he came to immensely dislike Einstein. I always wonder, was some of the jealousy when yeah. I read a story like this? Because a lot of people know that. Exactly. Because a lot of people know that Einstein was Time Magazine's person of the 20th century. I mean, Einstein got a lot of recognition for his theories, for his work. Was part of it jealousy on Leonard's yes, part? An enormous part. He wanted to be recognized by the common man. He wanted to be loved by the people of, of Germany. And it, it just wasn't his style. It wasn't his personality. Einstein, when, his, uh, when the first proof of the general theory, theory of relativity occurred, was overnight a rock star. He was mm -hmm. a sensation. And it just galled Leonard to, uh, I, I'm almost to death. Were they ever friends? How did the relationship start out, and when did it turn for the worse? They had a very friendly correspondence to start. Uh, Einstein was much younger, 17 years younger. And uh, he had done some research, actually made a law out of something that Leonard had worked on a number of years earlier, and he'd given Leonard a lot of credit. Hmm. And that started a very friendly correspondence. Not, uh, it wasn't a real rapid correspondence. It sort of dragged over time. But things turned when Einstein started to become more famous and his theories started to become accepted. Hmm. What was Leonard's um, relationship, so to speak, with the Nazis? Yes. And how did he become involved with, with Hitler's regime? He was always a very nationalistic man, a great believer, just the opposite of, of Einstein, who, who called nationalism the, the measles of humanity. Uh, so uh, it wasn't hard once the world, uh, world War I ended, and there was a, a lot of problems, economic problems, horrible inflation in Germany. He had some financial reversals himself, and it was just as Hitler was beginning to bring the Nazi party into fruition, and he grasped onto it. He became a Nazi way before he had to politically, and uh, he was a true believer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then did he start stalking Einstein? Is that kind of what, is that true? So by stalking, what I actually mean is he would follow Einstein, and he would write about him. He would harass him. He would hold him up as the Jew. He personalized his, his hatred of Jews and focused it entirely on Einstein, who he mm. thought was a total fraud and uh, the theory of relativity, uh, pure charlatanry. You know, speaking of relativity, there's, there's a quote that you put on the back of the book that I actually think gets to Einstein's sense of humor. Yes. A lot of the quotes you chose from him in particular show sort of a lightheartedness about yes. his theories. And he said, when you're recording a nice girl, an hour seems like a second. When you sit on a red hot cinder, a second seems like an hour. <laughs> that's relativity. <laughs> so that's why Einstein was so popular. He, he, he could talk to the common man. He was witty, he was, uh, women loved him, he was a handsome man in his youth. Uh, I don't know what happened to the hair later on. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my hair later on either. But no, he was, he was much loved uh, until Leonard really began to grind on him and uh, he, he lost a lot of his popularity and eventually was forced to flee Germany. Huh. How does someone get all this information? I mean, so much of this is in, in years past. Mm -hmm. I mean, how have you done uh, some interviews or was it really just digging and digging in through history to find a lot of this information? Yes, uh, pretty much everybody in th that is dead mm -hmm. from that time. So y I didn't have to worry about conflicting interview stories. <laughs> and what I'm working on now, there's more of that. But uh, no, you, it's amazing what you can find on the web. I do had uh, two co-authors, Germans, who were able to translate things for me and to help me with some of the, the more difficult science. Mm -hmm. In writing the book and finding out more specifically about Leonard, did you find yourself feeling sympathy, maybe empathy, or did you feel more one of the dislike or yeah. disgust? One of the remarkable things about Einstein is he is almost purely evil. And you almost never run across 
a character like that. Einstein or Leonard? Leonard. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No. And so there, you have uh, this tension between a character who's mostly very good and very much appreciated, and a character who, as I say, seemed to have no redeeming qualities, totally unrepentant. Hmm. What's and your next work? I'm working on a book about the discovery of AIDS as seen through the eyes of the man who discovered it huh. and what happened to him in the years that followed. Wow. It's a very, and this one, they're all alive and yeah. they all have different versions of the story and it's very exciting to do. Yeah. What do you do at your book signings? You have one tonight at seven o'clock. Will you read or will you greet people or just sign the books? So I'm going to speak for a while about the book. I may read a very small about, um, amount of, out of the book and then I'll answer questions, and I hope people will come and, and uh, learn something about Leonard. It's interesting. Wonderful. So exciting. I think it's a, a yeah, fascinating read, especially if you, you want to know a little bit more about our history. Tonight at 7 o'clock, Boswell Book Company on Downer. That's where you can find out more at the website. BruceJHillman.com is where you can also get his book and learn a little bit more. Thanks so much. Thank you very nice much. Nice to meet I you. I enjoyed it. Fascinating book.